So when we talk about going and exploring Moon or Mars, we're talking about exploring with humans. That means you're taking to the people to the surface. You're not just staying inside of your habitat. You're also going to have to go outside and really get dirty. And that presents a lot of challenges for your entire lunar surface system architecture. And overall, what we think about with that really in the EVA community is how are you going to get outside? What is that actual transition from inside of your habitat to being on the exploration of the surface? So for us, when we think about EVA access, those challenges come down to how do you minimize consumables loss, minimize the overall system complexity, minimize cross-contamination between both your habitat getting outside and the outside getting in your habitat, compatibility with your non-surface habitats, and how do you accommodate those contingency scenarios both with an incapacitated crew member or something that goes wrong with your way to get back inside of your habitat. So the traditional way that we think about getting EVA access is through an airlock. Um, this is the ISS dual chamber airlock. So this is nice when you're in microgravity. You have a large volume that is your equipment lock. And that's where you have your suits stowed. That's where you do all of your suit resizing and check out before you go outside. But I also have that smaller volume, which we call the crew lock. And you see that in the diagram at the top. It's on the end. This guy right here is the crew lock. And that's where you actually can fit two crew members very tightly before they go outside. Obviously, this is not the type of exact airlock that you would have on a surface. This would be quite uncomfortable once you have gravity there. Um, but you have the, equip the equipment lock, which is larger volume. And you can see when you talk about an EVA system, it's not just the spacesuits, but also crammed back in here inside of your airlock when you're going outside. It's all of your tools that you're taking with you. It is the interface panel to the consumables that are providing you air to breathe and power to your spacesuit as you're doing your pre-breathe before you go outside. It's a large system, so we need to think about how do you package all of that and do it efficiently as you go outside. When we look at surface airlocks, some of the things that we've looked at when you talk about desert rats or even going all the way back to the Space Exploration Initiative is it probably is going to need to be a multi-phase system. You're bringing all that dirt inside and you don't want to have that inside once you've opened up your spacesuits in the airlock or the equivalent of the crew lock from the ISS airlock. How do you stage your process? So when you think about your habitat design, doing something like this, that's a lot of extra mass, it's a lot of extra volume, but it's very convenient in that you can keep most of the dirt outside. Perhaps you have a mudroom sort of situation and then an air shower to help hose off any extra uh, loose particles of dirt. So you're as clean as possible before you go into the part where you're going to have shirt sleeve interaction, minimizing cross-contamination into your habitat. So it's a really tried and true system if you want to get to the surface quickly. This is mostly technology that we have today, so it's rather easy to employ going forward. But again, it has some drawbacks as you look at going further and further. It's not really feasible to put this type of an airlock onto the back of, say, a small pressurized rover. That really defeats the purpose of small and small pressurized rover trying to get around to explore more of the surface. So looking forward, maybe it's not our best option. Another one that we've considered is the suit lock concept. And so suit lock, if you're not familiar with it, is the idea that you would have your suits that are stuck on the back wall of your vehicle or your habitat in this case. And so this is actually a small pressurized volume that is in front of it. So think of it as a very minimal airlock. And you would actually don your suit by going through this door. This is not a pressure sealing hatch between the suit and the interior habitat volume, but it is more like a dust gate. So that's going to keep all the dirty suit bits primarily on the outside of your habitat. So inside and outside, it's easy to come in without bringing all the extra muck inside with you. But having the pressurized volume in the front does give you the opportunity, if you want to do resize, you can go through an access hatch in between the two suits, get inside the pressurized volume, do suit maintenance, change out swap components, whatever you need to do. So it's kind of a mix between the airlock and the suit port concept, which we'll get to in just a moment. So we have looked at this in a couple different ways. This is basically the donning sequence for the suit lock. So again, your suit is on the outside. This would be the inside of your habitat. You would crawl in with your feet through the rear entry of the hatch, slide into your suit, close the hatch behind you, and do the pressurization process as normal. This is also nice from the suit perspective in that your suit can be basically at the same um, delta pressures that you're used to seeing. That would be keeping your suit somewhere between no more than eight PSI, which is great um, because that is easier on all the suit components. It's going to be a lighter weight suit and easier to manage over time. This is some of the testing we have done at the Johnson Space Center. This is a mock-up of one of the many iterations of the space exploration vehicle. And this concept, you can kind of see how the suit, port the suit lock would work, having the suit on the outside and the pressurized volume in front of you. 
This is, again, nice. It separates the contamination issues, but it's also rather mass intensive. It could work on the back of a small rover, but once you do that, once you move to this type of concept, you're also getting this plate on the back of your EVA suit, which makes it less compatible backward if you look at the gateway. That plate now makes you too big to go out the airlock hatch of a traditional gateway style airlock. So it's all about thinking how does it affect every part of your system from the gateway down to the surface. And the last uh, concept that we consider is the suit port, which is very similar to the suit lock, except for in the front, this is no longer a pressurized volume in front of the suit. This is completely unpressurized, um, but it does have an environmental cover, so it keeps dust and radiation from degrading the suit when it's not in use. The harder bit for the suit on this part is now your habitat pressure is always going to be your suit pressure. These two will be equalized, so the impact to your habitat itself is you do not want to have a pressure greater than about 8.2 because that really gets too hard for your spacesuit. It becomes too heavy and hard to maintain your suit. So the impact to your habitat is having to run that at a lower pressure all the time. And this is the concept you've probably seen a lot. If you've seen any of our rovers driving around at Desert Rats or in the inaugural parade, uh, that the suits are on the outside, the environmental cover is here. It also complicates the system in that now all of your consumables that go to the spacesuit for recharge and in between your EVAs, you have to be able to access all of those from both sides of the suit instead of just on the back where your portable life support system resides. It's adding complexity, but it does give you the advantage of you can go outside very quickly. There's not a lot of setup. You're not losing a lot of gas because it's always unpressurized on the back of it. There are pros and cons of all of these options and how they relate to your habitat really needs to be considered. So just again for a quick comparison, these are really just relative scales. Depending on where you're going, you need to look forward across the entire system. How much are you willing to give in one area versus another to make the entire system function effectively? Thank you. Um, quick uh, from the panel, a quick question from Lindsay. So I have one, then I'll let the panel think for the next ones. So it seems to me that um, as we move forward, one of the, because of our training in civil engineering, right, um, and risk and, uh, and, and that sort of thing, it seems that this is, could be a very sensitive component of a habitat, uh, particularly if something that has to be uh, used uh, multiple times. So to what extent the risk redundancy of this system you think that is going to drive the design of an airlock or suit lock? From a risk perspective, from a human risk perspective, especially one of the things that we consider is making sure that you can always get back inside into a safe haven. And that's something having a dual chamber airlock provides for you. Um, so if your primary hatch fails, you have a second smaller pressurizable volume where you do not have to depressurize your entire habitat and able to, in order to get your person back inside. The same could be true with a suit lock. When you come to the suit port concept, that's a higher risk for your habitat in that if the suit port fails, your option is to depress the entire habitable volume and come into a side door, some sort of logistics volume. So you have to think about that in the design of all of your systems. Do they need to be vacuum compatible? Do they need to be dust compatible in that contingency case? Likewise, if there is an incapacitated crew member, you're outside EVA, something happens, a health problem to the crew member, how do you get that person back inside? When you have a more traditional style airlock, it's think about even what you would do here terrestrially. If you have a search and rescue exercise, you can pull somebody on a sled, get them into a pressurized volume. Once you have a suit port, that becomes more complex for the entire system. And it's not insurmountable by any means. It just adds something else that you need to think about from the end-to-end -end system design. 